Today I'm going to take you through 10 seam finishing methods along with the best situation to use them and the pros and cons of each one. They will vary in budget and tools needed so that there is a method for all. Before you pick your method, you first need a bit of a background on why this step is essential. Woven fabric will fray once it has been cut. Certain fabrics will fray very quickly with barely any handling such as a bushel on silks. If you don't secure the cut edge, eventually that fray will reach your seam and your garment will fall apart on you. To pick your method, you must consider three things. First decide whether to finish your seam allowance together or apart. Thick fabrics will have too much bulk finished together. Thin fabrics may be too weak and fiddly to finish separate. You may also find certain seams require a separated finish to allow you to insert a zipper or access point. Next, you need to assess how visible that seam will be on your end garment. If the seam is, say, a waistband, no one is going to see that but you. So you can worry less about how pretty it looks and more about the functionality. In reverse, the inside of a jacket with no lining, all them seams will be seen when you take the garment on and off. Maybe lie it over your bag or arm carrying it around or hanging it on a chair. So a seam is going to be fully on view and you'll want it to look polished like the outside of the garment. Next is to think about the area the seam will be touching the body and how sensitive that skin is if it will be touching skin. You don't want to add a rough textured seam finish to the inside leg of your trousers that's going to chafe and irritate you. Same for children's clothing. They need to be softer for their delicate skin. As you approach each seam in turn, ask these three questions before you pick your method. You may use multiple methods in one garment. The overlocker is a finish you will be used to seeing on mass produced garments. It's very quick, very secure, works on many fabrics because you can adjust the settings according to your fabric weight and stretch. It's very versatile. The only downside is you need a whole machine just for this. A separate machine to your regular sewing machine just for finishing edges. This is a big expense for a new sewer. It is another large machine to store if your space is limited also. I did not have an overlocker machine for the first decade of my sewing life. I do now, I love it and I don't regret buying it at all. But I would say unless you're someone who regularly sews in knits, this is a purchase for someone who knows their sewing hobby is a permanent thing in their life, or you find a decent one second hand. I will not go into the details of overlocking here as it requires a video alone, but this is your first option. Pinking shears are a set of scissors with a serrated edge. You trim along the edge of the seams and you get this zigzag edge. This acts by creating a break so if you pull the fabric thread here, it doesn't pull out all the way along and unravel. Over time, this will wear down and look worn and less precise, but it holds its own better than nothing. You can pick up pinking shears pretty cheap. I would recommend going for a middle of the price range or above, just so they last longer and they are a great to have in your kit. It's a quick, cheap method and it's a great one for beginners. Often used on shirts, this method closes the raw edge inside of the seam. It best suits thin to medium weight material. It works well on a non-opaque fabric where you can see the shape of the seams from the outside of the garment. You can also achieve this with a straight stitch on your machine and an iron. No extra equipment is needed. The only downside of this method is that you usually require more seam allowance than other methods. You also have to sew the garment in a reverse manner, applying the wrong sides together then the right side. So it doesn't really work on every project you do. I will use a total seam allowance of 1.5cm in this example. To achieve a French seam, you sew your seam wrong sides together at 0.5 centimeters. 
you trim this down to roughly 0.25 cm. Turn the fabric so the right sides are together and carefully press the seam you have just created along the edge so it is neat and sharp. So again with right sides together using a 1 cm seam allowance. Press to one side. Your seam allowance is complete with all raw edges inside. The end result is professional, smooth and clean. And yes, you can do this on a sleeve head. I have have a tutorial here on this, so check that out. It's a beautiful finish. Bias binding is an extra strip of fabric applied to your raw edges. The fabric is usually cut on the bias to allow lots of movement in curves. You can connect them together or you can do each side independently. This is often referred to as a Hong Kong finish. The downside of this method is you require more materials to complete your garment and it takes more time than most of the other methods. The upside is you can really personalise your garment with your fabric choice. You can match it exactly to your main fabric so it blends or you can pick a complementary colour. I love using this finish inside unlined coats with a pop of colour. It's beautiful to see that inside neckline when you're putting on that coat and just have this stunning colour scheme visible to really make a garment feel special without it being a big bold outside look. So I recommend this on jackets, coats, wool garments. There are a few ways to apply bias binding, including with a special foot. The way I would recommend for beginners is to align along your raw edge right sides together, unfolding any folds with your fingers. Sew along the first fold line. Wrap the binding around the raw edge to the other side using the folds to guide you. You should see the right side of the binding. Pin in place and then sew again on the folded edge nearest your seam. You can also stitch in the ditch if you want. When you begin, it can be helpful to hand base curves so you're not working with pins. This is a method that takes a bit of practice to get any speed at, but once you have mastered it, it works on many projects, including really thick, large fabrics like the edges of blankets. You can create your own bias binding with fabric offcuts. It's a great scrap buster. Check out my video above for how to make that. You will find this method on jeans and denim jackets. Like the French seam, the raw edge is encased within. But this is a very strong seam. It can take some serious abuse. If you're making a shopping bag or rucksack, work overalls, this is a great method for you. Another perk of this is you can make a feature of the top stitching on your design by using contrast colours. A downside is that it functions better on a straight seam, though it is not impossible to do on a curve. You do also get a faux flat felt seam, which you can use to match up exterior looks when you get somewhere it won't be easy to achieve. To achieve this seam, align your fabric wrong sides together and stitch at your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press the seam open and trim one side down to 1 quarter inch. On the other side, press under the raw edge towards the seam by 1 quarter inch. Turn this over the smaller seam and press flat. Pin to hold and top stitch at 3 8 inch from the seam along that folded edge. For this method you have to be accurate with your measurement and really precise with your top stitching. If you wobble and deviate from the 3 8 inch point too much it will show clear on the end garment. The faux flat felled seam is for places you want to copy the outward appearance of a flat felled seam but your garment doesn't allow it due to say a zipper or a pocket. For this align your garment 
right side together and sew at your 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press open, then press both seams to one side. If you are working with a thick fabric, trim the under seam allowance to one quarter inch to reduce bulk. Finish the top seam allowance, or both together if you have not trimmed one, with one of the methods shown here, like overlocker, zigzag or pinking shears. Then, from the outside, top stitch at the 3 8 inch mark from the seam, through all the seam allowance below, securing it in place. Externally, it will match your flat veiled seams and no one will be aware it's different. This next method is the best thing to an overlocker without buying a second machine. Change your machine to the zigzag setting and sew along the raw edge. Stitch close but not over the raw edge as this can create curling or a tunneling effect. You can trim the excess closer after if you want. This just creates a sort of wall that the fraying cannot go past. The downside of this is it can feel quite rough and puckering on the skin. With this step you usually need to adjust the tension on your machine for each fabric and a medium width and length stitch is best. You can use a plain or three step zigzag. Some machines also have overlocking stitches included. These are a variety of stitches they are made in the same process as the zigzag stitch above, but they are designed to stop the fabric from fraying. You can also get machine feet attachments for this step that help keep you aligned to the edge precisely. Check out your machine's manual and see what is available. For my machine, these are my options. Personally, I don't use the clean stitch method but I will include it as it is accessible for a beginner. You press under the edge and then sew it down, working only on the seam allowance. Like the zigzag, you're making a barrier to stop the fraying going beyond that point. I don't like it, I don't see the benefit over some of the methods used above, except maybe it's more delicate on the skin than a zigzag. It is neat though, and it is a simple straight line sew. This only works for straight seams. Finally, hand stitching methods can be explored. There are a variety and each has a purpose to achieve. Usually that is to control bulk, be an invisible finish or create structure. These methods are common in couture garments and I encourage you to look them up. One of these is the overcast stitch or whip stitch where you wrap the thread round the edge of the fabric. So work your way down the edge at regular intervals, always entering the fabric from the same side. The more your fabric frays, the smaller you want the gaps to be. Tie off securely at the beginning and end. Then repeat the process, working the opposite direction through the same holes. This is a slow method but you can do it with a needle and thread anywhere you want. If you work on keeping your stitches even, it can look very decorative too. It's a lovely stitch to see on blankets and teddies. This is not a complete list. There are plenty more methods that you can try, but these will get you started with most garments as a beginner. Learn what you like and where you favour them. As I said earlier, each seam needs assessing according to its needs and you may use multiple methods on one garment. The end goal is a functional garment that's going to last forever. I'm Elfie Sew so, and I create sewing tutorials for all abilities. Please hit like if you have learnt from today's video and subscribe to stay notified of future videos. Thanks for watching to the end and happy sewing.